All right, so let's have a look at the code. We'll start with push agent basic. This is our agent script. We can see that it inherits from the agent parent class, which is going to give us access to a couple of different useful functions and methods that we're going to be using. Now, remember that the overall goal uh, point to using this agent script is we need a way to tell the agent how it's able to take observations of the world, how it's able to take actions in the world, and also to define the reward function that the agent is using to define its behavior. We can initialize an agent, which is used to set up the agent. We're going to be setting up references to different items that the agent's going to need. For collecting observations, remember this is how the agent is going to learn about the world. In this example, we want our agent to learn about the world using a whole lot of raycasts. So this function here, we can see that we're defining a raycast distance, raycast angles, and what we're going to do is in the scene, we're going to tag different objects with different strings. So the block is going to have a, is going to be tagged with block. The goal is going to be tagged with goal. And the surrounding walls are going to be tagged with wall. This add vector observation method here is a method that we have access to because we are inheriting from the agent class. And the point of using this is we can feed it observations about the environment and it's going to add it to the observation list that goes off to the brain. We'll walk through this script here in just a little bit, but for now, just realize that this method here is adding our, the results from our raycast to our observation array. The other important thing about this script is our agent actions. So after we have learned about the world using raycasts, we want the agents to be able to take different actions. You can see that in this function we have a move agent method here. Let's have a look at that. So in move agent we're passing it the float array for the actions that we can take. Now because this is a discrete action space, it's only going to return one value. So you can see right here, our action is going to be the first item in the array, and we need to cast it as an int. That int we're going to use in a, in a switch statement. If it returns a 0, then it's going to go forward. If it returns a 1, it's going to go back, etc., etc. So our available actions that we can take, move forward, move back, move left, move right, and then we're also including rotation in this uh, action set here. After it returns that, we can rotate the agent and we can add our force so that the agent moves. Okay, so whenever an agent scores a goal, we need to mark it as done. And whenever we mark an agent as done, Again, remember in the editor, we are marking it as reset on done on the agent script. And so whenever an agent resets, it's going to reset the agent's position, its velocity, its angular velocity, essentially resetting everything back to the starting state, except for the fact that it's going to put the agent in a randomized location. Okay, so how does an agent know when it gets a reward or when it gets a penalty? Because this environment is pretty straightforward and simple, there's really only one way for an agent to get a reward. Whenever the orange block touches the goal, the agent will get a reward. If you notice on the orange block, there's a script called goal detect. And all this script is doing, it's using on collision enter to detect when the orange block touches a game object that's tagged as goal. When that happens, this function is called I scored a goal on the agent script. Let's have a quick look at that. 
Okay, so here we go. So when I scored a goal is called, the agent gets a reward of five. The agent is marked as done. We successfully scored a goal. We need to reset, respawn, and try again. And finally, the ground material is swapped to indicate that we scored a goal for half of a second. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about the reward function. In this environment, the agent comes to realize that the only positive reward is given it whenever the orange cube touches the goal. There is a negative reward that's given to the agent every single step based on how long it takes to complete its task. The point of doing this is to encourage an agent to hurry up and complete the task as soon as possible. Hunter mentioned earlier that we're using ray perception for our agent's observations. I want to talk a little bit about how we do that. We do it using this ray perception component, which we attach to our agent. Looking at it in particular, we see that there is this perceive function, and this is the function we call twice within collect observations on our agent to actually collect all the observations necessary. The way this function works is it takes in a distance, which describes how far away the rays should be shot, a float array of ray angles, which correspond to the angles that the array should be at relative to the agent itself, a string array of detectable objects, which correspond to the tags of the kinds of objects we'd like our agent to know about, and then lastly, the starting and ending offsets of the ray.